I want to start this review with a bit of a disclaimer that it's going to be less solid and well-informed than I usually like these videos to be. And this is because a lot of the information about Dragon's Quest, particularly 10, as well as almost all the DQ art books, is in Japanese. On top of that, I have never played a Dragon Quest game, nor know anything about it beyond my experience and subsequent research based on this book. So just keep in mind this review is going to have a more limited perspective and more ignorance, guesswork, and I don't knows than I would like. To the point that I was doubting the value of actually doing a review on this book, but I've decided to do it anyway for two reasons. One, because I haven't seen any flip-throughs or even really any other information in English for this book, which I felt is a real shame because two, it is delightful. Plus, I think this is a perspective that even many Western DQ fans will relate to due to the fact that I imagine only the most hardcore fans will have ever experienced 10 since it never received an official English translation and release. Likewise, this book was only ever released in Japan in 2020, about 8 years after the game launched. It was not the first DQ 10 art book released, but I'm going to save talking about that till the end. Why this book's title is in English, I don't know, but don't let that fool you because the text is entirely Japanese. Not that that really matters at all because there is so little text, there's barely a handful of one sentence staff comments, and other than that the only text is each image is labelled, though that is definitely a reason I would have liked an English release just so I could have any context for what I'm looking at and then be able to look up how stuff appears in game. Nevertheless, essentially the entire emphasis here is on the art, and I do mean emphasis. When I first pulled the book out of the box, I thought they must have sent me a phone book by mistake, because that's what it looks and feels like. Thankfully though, with appropriate art book quality paper, I would have preferred they did it in hardcover, but it seems pretty common in Japan for books even of this size to be paperback, but for a paperback, they seem to have done a pretty solid job with the binding, so it doesn't seem like it will be a problem if you're not too rough with it. But yeah, it is a meaty 570 pages. Having a lot of pages is merely a promise, one that we've seen many tomes fail to live up to through being page heavy but content light. Here, however, we actually have a book that is mostly as content rich as the outside would suggest. That they've packed so much into so many pages is great for the obvious reasons, but I think it is so crucial for this book's success and serves to validate maybe the most frequent complaint on the channel about books being a disappointment due to not containing a satisfactory quantity of content, and that's especially important for an MMO like DQ10 that has so much stuff in it that the book has to at least attempt to live up to that. Otherwise, it will feel measly and disappointing. And you know, as great as it is, I can't imagine that even this book does anything more than scratch the surface in terms of representing everything in the game. But my point is that it's praiseworthy how the creators have done almost everything possible to create the most satisfying book. At least in terms of doing one volume, doing a series of art books would be better, like Square Enix has done with another of their MMORPGs, Final Fantasy XIV. But as far as a single book goes, at least they've done everything they can here. Because anything over 570 pages would would be physically problematic and trying to cram any more images per page would make them too small and that's the other thing that's done really well striking that tricky balance between making sure you're putting as many images as possible per page while also making sure they're appropriately sized. And I love that it succeeded in creating such a satisfying experience where so many other art books fail purely through being simple and sensible. Mostly anyway. Because one of the two disappointments I have with the book is that it's frustrating that I can't call the sizing and layout perfect due to a tiny number of uncharacteristically dumb exceptions that spoil that. There are very few cases where artworks have been run over two pages, ruining the image and leaving wasted blank space. Likewise, the character section is by far the weakest in the book, with one reason being that it's more minimalist with its content and layout featuring some overly large one or two characters per page. Thankfully, this is balanced out by the number of cases where three to four characters are displayed, and then outweighed by the rest of the book being the opposite of this, and overall streets ahead of 99% of other art books, so it might seem petty to berate those minor cases since they don't really represent the book overall, but I was just a little annoyed that they undermined my praise for how good the layout and quantity otherwise are. The book's divided into four sections. The first 50 pages they've called image art, and it seems to be stuff that is just straight up illustration rather than concept design works, so key art, promotional art, special event illustrations, group illustrations, and it gets the book off to a really great start because it's imagery that combines the characters, the world, 
action or narrative, and it's really charming and sets the tone and gives life and personality to the characters and world, since all those elements are usually isolated once you get into the design works. The next 110 pages are characters and creatures. There doesn't seem to be any dedicated monster or creature design section, they're just mixed in with all the characters. There also doesn't seem to be a whole lot of them, at least in terms of what I would expect for an MMORPG that has been around for eight years. Me pointing out the creature's representation here isn't necessarily a criticism at all, rather just an observation for you to determine and if that represents anything relevant. What is a criticism, though, is sort of a part two of my earlier gripe with the character section being the weak link in this is an art book. So where the issue with the quantity and layout in this section was unimpressive in a few cases, but in terms of concept, visuals, value, and interest, the character section is almost entirely unimpressive. By which I mean it is almost exclusively just a collection of one final design illustration per character. Now, as someone who has no prior experience with the game, I did enjoy looking at these characters because it's all new to me. And so if you're in the same boat or a DQ fan who just hasn't played 10, then this won't matter much. However, that's not the audience this book should be catering to, so both in terms of imagining myself in the shoes of a fan who's played the game, as well as from the perspective of appraising what makes a good art book in general, it is severely unimpressive for the book to have no design exploration and so little visual variety, particularly when it has the space in this section to do so. There are a couple of caveats to this. Firstly, there are a few instances where one character will get two or more images, or will actually feature some model sheet type stuff or sketches, none of which is especially enthralling, but still of far more visual interest than the white space surrounding most characters. The other thing is that my ignorance could be causing me to be a little out of line with this criticism. Some of the characters that look similar but also distinct I'm reading as final designs for two separate characters, when in reality they might actually be alternate designs for one character. Likewise, for all I know, some of these images might be showcasing characters and monsters that were cut from the final game, which would be cool, but honestly I think this is another example of me desperate to give the book the benefit of the doubt despite not really seeing any of this actually being the case. Thankfully though, the environment section is much more interesting and better handled all round, which is good because at 350 pages it makes up 60% of the book, and so you definitely want to keep in mind just how much of this book is environment art and that you'll be happy with that even to the deficit of other areas. I still don't get the impression there's much design exploration here, though again I could be completely wrong, but nevertheless there's a better use of space with a wider variety of styles and views that make it more interesting. Then the last 40 page section is called Artifact, and that's a little bit of costumes, props, more environments, and some other miscellany, but it's all really nice. Though even more than the monsters, the most glaring omission I noticed is that there is no collection of arms and armor at all in the book. I don't think that's categorically bad, but surprising since it's a complete omission of a pretty standard art book inclusion, so perhaps worth mentioning. Also on the inside of the back cover, the book has a little card with a code to unlock an in-game item. If that's important to you, you'll want to look into if the codes are still valid and if you're buying the book secondhand to make sure it hasn't already been redeemed. At the start of the video, I mentioned this wasn't the first DQ10 art book, nor was it the last. So one problem I have with most book reviews is that people tend to view and assess them in a vacuum, without comparing them to existing publications or considering the bigger picture handling of their creation and publishing in terms of how the books collectively work with or against each other, and whether they're giving the best experience to fans. But so far for this book I've deliberately been praising and appraising it without viewing it in this wider context, and basically that's because, just viewed purely on its own, I think it's wonderful. Not only that, but unambiguously the best DQ10 art book, at least for those who don't know Japanese anyway, and so it's really the only one relevant to most English readers except for the bigger fans who will want as complete a collection as possible. Nonetheless, I still want to make you aware of the other books and certainly won't let shitty, thoughtless, exploitative publishing skulk by without a good shaming. So in 2016, four years before this book was published, there was another 500 page art book for DQ10 called Astoltia Suseki, and the problem is simply that Remember earlier when I said the only way they could have made this book better was releasing multiple volumes? Well, they did that, but rather than using the opportunity to have the books work together to create the ultimate rewarding DQ10 library, for each book to complement and build on the last, going deeper and into new things, instead they've just recycled most of the same content across the books. And I hate that then viewing the book in this context I have to backpedal on all the praise I was giving the creators earlier about how they've done everything they possibly can to put as much in here and give the fans the most satisfying experience, 
only to then be like, yeah, that's actually meaningless, since they had the opportunity to create multiple volumes and instead they've just repeated so many of the images from an earlier book. So in terms of how Astoltia Suseki compares to this book, it's hard for me to say definitively because I have never actually seen the contents beyond a couple of pictures online. So that's what I'm basing my criticism on, meaning this is another area where I could be very out of line with my comments, so just keep that potential ignorance in mind. But it is also based on what I've observed with Square Enix's handling of Dragon Quest books overall, so I'd be very surprised if I'm mistaken. So Seki appears to be a lot more text heavy and contain a wider variety of images like screenshots and storyboards, but also exclusive artworks, sketches, color pieces, in fact, I even noticed a weapons section, so the completest fan will be interested in this book, even if no doubt begrudgingly, but from what I saw, it looks like mostly overlap between the two books. My big question is, does the art of Astoltia contain anything that the Soseki book doesn't? You would suspect so based on it having more pages and no text taking up space, however, the artworks in the art of Astoltia are reproduced much larger, but in a good way. It's hard to say without physically seeing, but the reproductions in the other book look too small. But which of the two books contains more or better images, I can't definitively say, but I am confident in saying that for English fans at least, The Art of Astaltia is the superior and more enjoyable art book. But guess what? Wasting the opportunity to create a meaningful multi-volume series and instead annoying fans with rebuying much of the same content, doing that once wasn't enough for Square Enix. No, just a year after The Art of Astaltia, they released another DQ10 art book called Dragon Quest X Online Material Museum Astaltia Secret Journals, and I actually have that one, so we'll take a look and do a more thorough examination of how it compares in the next video.